Hi everybody, welcome back to Living Between Paychecks Kitchen. I'm Oz. I'm Jack. And a few weeks ago we asked everybody to send us their questions, anything they wanted to know. We've been collecting them from videos and comments from all our different social media stuff. So we're going to do those. We're going to sit down and just answer what questions we got from you guys. Hopefully it'll help. Before we get started, be sure to click the little thing down there, subscribe, put the little bell so you get notifications. Let's get into it. Shameless promotion. <laughs> So, so same with plug, same with plug. All right, so our first question is cereal a soup? And now my knee jerk reaction was like, well, yeah, I guess, basically. Shit. So we started digging around, and a soup is supposed to be something that's been boiled in a broth nope. type, so, or a stock. And I wouldn't see cereal as that, so it's, yeah. it's more along the lines of just a mixture. Right? Yeah, so unless you're boiling your soup, your cereal. Yeah, because like you make a spacho now. that's served cold, but it's actually heated and warmed and then served cold. So that's the thing. So our next one was, what is your go-to marinade, Jack? Well, I don't normally marinade. I usually do dry rubs. But for marinade, like when I make fajitas, I do oil, Worcestershire sauce, lime juice, and then chili powder, cayenne, garlic, whatever mixtures you want in. Mix it up and then put your meat in, mix it up again, and then sort for 12 to 24 hours. And that's marinated. And then me, we grew up poor, man. So if we had meat that needed to be marinated, it was something funky. So you put like battery acid on that shit to break it down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Buffalo steak. Uh, usually any kind of uh, like Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Yeah, <laughs> whatever kind of mixture of that and some spices and stuff. But now again, I'm a fan of the the dry rub. I'm a stuff. dry rub person. Yeah. Like I use this Williams Food Co. stuff for dry rub, and then I'll put on the garlic, chili powder, and cayenne pepper again. Hmm. Oh, speaking of which, that's our next question: Is why do you use chili powder on everything, or garlic powder in just about everything you do? Now, growing up poor, like I said, everything talk, tastes like dirt. It yeah. is not good. It tastes like that dollar store steak we tried. Yeah, yeah. that was horrible. <laughs> right? So you want to take the flavor away from it being government cheese or whatever. So you add stuff to it. And garlic is an easy way. Garlic, onion, super cheap, super easy way to make it taste better and not make it taste like sadness. Yeah. And, uh, chili powder is more along Jack's line. He wants everything to be spicy. I put hot sauce on just about everything because I like vinegar. Actually, to me, I find chili powder to be sweet. I use this as a sweetener, believe it or not. You can tell he has one taste bud left. <laughs> <laughs> and burn out all the rest of them. Uh, no, like chili powder is the sweet, and then this is the, this is the spice, it's cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper. Yeah. I always thought you had to be from like one of them. So or it's. Just, I use this because when we live here, you use chili powder in almost everything in this state, or you should. If you don't, because well, armadillo tastes horrible tasting. if you don't cook it properly. Yeah, maybe. So our next question was, what was it? Is salsa a fruit salad? No. 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 Uh, Again, knee-jerk reaction? Yeah, sure, sounds right. But then the more we look at the ingredients list, well, then you also have cilantro and onion and stuff that yeah, isn't a fruit. fruit. So maybe like a mixed salad? Yeah, it's yeah. like a mixed salad at best, <laughs> like, but there's another problem. It's goopy. Yeah, so your like salad your fruit salad, salad yeah. Well, if you get the cheap stuff that comes in the dollar store cans, it oh. might be goopy, but that means you need to check the date on it. <laughs> Other than that, yeah. I've always had fruit salads that were relatively dry. dry. Yeah. So I... Uh, like again, knee jerk reaction, yes. Upon further inspection, probably not. not. I wouldn't advertise it as such, other than it's also. So yeah. that's a thing. Uh, is this your only job? Was another one because apparently we're doing either really good or really bad, and they want to know if we're doing anything else. Uh, I do art commissions and paints and do miniatures and stuff. You can find that on Instagram. At Art is Oz or Oz. Way nerdy, you can find me over there. Jack, you actually drive for a food delivery thing, right? Yeah, I'm a food delivery driver for a company I'm not wanting to make. Can't, can't take <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I do that full time and then this one. In so, he deals with food professionally. I am more of an amateur fanatic for the food stuff. So, we do that. Uh, this one was apparently directed directly to me is Why Are You So Ugly? Uh, because I have to make this face when I deal with idiot questions of fucking morons like you. And it makes me ugly. So I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> what was that? Bro, who uh, should say that? Fuck them. They call me ugly. That's what they get. <laughs> uh, we've been asked, where are the fancy hot dogs? Now, again, we started thinking about this one. Is hot dogs in and of themselves can't be fancy because they're mutilated bits, bits of, of animals cow? that have been stuffed into a thing so a fancy one would be unmutilated stuff so we started thinking that a fancy hot dog would be a steak and we can't do steaks because we're poor so that's where our fancy hot dogs are if you take nothing away from this <laughs> this show just know that fancy hot dogs equal steak 
I think. If I it's guess. a beef, if it's all beef hot dogs, it's steak. If it's chicken and pork, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. And then uh, we've been asked for tips to how to cook pasta to keep the pasta from sticking. I've never had a problem with pasta with sticking, other than if I let it dry and then just let it, you know, like I cooked it and then strained it and set it aside, then it gets to sticking. Uh, other than that, if you make sure the water is boiling, like it's roiling, it'll keep it from sticking while it's in there. Uh, there's different uh, frames of mind on putting oil in it. Don't put oil in it. Everybody I've ever known says, don't put oil in it. And then Gordon Ramsay comes along, he's like, you got to put oil in it. So I don't know. Don't do that. I'll take my grandma's word over his, even though my grandma didn't make near as much money as he has putting oil in shit. Yeah. Uh, also, you can strain it if you're not going to use the pasta like right after you cook it you can you know run it through water or whatever that'll keep it from sticking also when you're cooking it stir the crap out of it like make sure the, the rolling stuff will keep it moving a lot but we got small pots and stuff don't let it sit on stirring. the bottom <laughs> right yeah just keep stirring it'll help that keep from sticking together that's really easy uh, i've been asked what are my arm tattoos uh mostly comic book stuff i got mr freeze and then <laughs> harley quinn some venom stuff magneto on the back dr doom storm who's awesome and then the cuffs i think is what they were probably talking about uh they're just broken cuffs to say intellectual expectations societal norms just because everybody looks at me and goes ah big guy go carry heavy stuff and i'm like i'm smarter than everybody in the room they don't understand so that that's the arm tattoos uh the last thing we got is uh why are we doing this? Now, we've covered this before and the other things. We can put the link down in the doobly doo talking about why we do this. But we started looking at people that we knew that were our age, older than us, younger than us, across the board, Don't know how to that cook. didn't know how to cook. And most of them were like, well, I just never tried. I never learned. I never knew anything. They had big, fancy kitchens and still went to the fast food place two or three times a day to go get food. And for that same money, we're showing you how to make food you can eat for two or three days. You can save money, too. Yeah. A, lot of <laughs> a lot of money to be able to get food that doesn't taste horrible despite the faces we make when we eat it or cook it whatever but it's that's why we do this stuff so that's our questions that we got we're going to have another one of these later we can answer them so you can throw some more now you can put it down in the comments be sure to tell us there tell us if we answered your question properly down here if you sent it to us and we'll see you here on youtube tuesdays and fridays you can find us on instagram at living between or on uh, Facebook at Living Between Paychecks Kitchen there. Or you can find us on Patreon, which yeah, helps us Patreon. lose weight because no. we're starving to death because we need more patrons. Please help <laughs> us out there. We very much appreciate it. We'll see you next time.